this video we talk about the demand relationship among goods. Basically, we will take a look of the goods whether they are substitute or complement or unrelated. So first, we will talk about the two good cases. Second, we will be talk about the substitutes and complement concept. And third, we will go to the Hexian demand curves and take a look of the net substitutes and complement. Finally, we will try to model the composite commodities. First is a two good case. So this is a usual demand function. Before before this video, we have taken a look what what will happen if the price of X change. So this will trigger the substitution event, income event. So the similar situation will happen in the cross price case. Okay. So rank X rank P Y is equal to rank X rank P Y given U is constant. Minus y times one y rank x rank i. Okay, so again, this is substitution event. This is the income event. <coughs> As you can see, both change in the price of good x and y will trigger two events. One is called substitution, and one one is called income event. That's why you can see that the change in the optimal value of x may not be robust. Okay, so there are two cases. The first one, so assume the price of Y decrease in both cases. So the first one is that this is the original consumption bundle X0. Now the price of Y decrease, so the budget line will rotate upward. Okay, then you can draw a new indifference curve in which the intersection is at the right of original one. So this shows that when price of Y is lower, you buy more X. <coughs> Similarly, you have the case that, so originally this is the optimal X, X naught. Okay, now the price of Y is lower. Then you can draw a indifference curve in which the intersection point of X is at the left of the original one. Then in this case, you can see optimal consumption of X is lowered. <coughs> so you can see when the price of good Y decrease, you may have two situations. Therefore, in different situations, we will give the type of goods with a different, different name. Okay. <clears throat> so we use different jargon to represent different situation. They are called substitute and complement. So let's go. Let, let's explore the ends good case. Okay. So you are doing rank x of the good i, and plus o p j. So the price of good j changed. It. How will it affect the demand for x i? Okay. So you can decompose into rank x i rank p j given u is constant. The substitution event minus the rank xj no, no, minus the xj then partial xi partial i okay so this is the income event so we say they are gross substitute if the partial xi partial pj is positive well because when pj increase people will buy less of the good j then they buy more XI. So this indicates a positive relation. They don't buy XJ and buy more XI, so they are called substitutes. And if partial XI, partial PJ is less than zero, then we call this gross complement. <laughs> yes, there is a problem in using this definition because the X and Y relation are not symmetry in this case. So say, partial xi partial pj is equal to partial xi partial pj given u is constant minus xj partial xi partial i and we take a look of the partial xj partial pi we will get partial xj partial pi given u is constant minus xi partial xj partial x partial i okay 
so we know this is negative for sure but the substitution effect in the two good case okay in two good case this must be negative but what if the right hand side okay so this stand for the income effect as you can see assume this is normal good then this is positive well if this is in VV this, this is negative then you can see that okay if a very strong positive effect and this is a negative effect then as a result the sign of partial xi partial pj and partial xj partial pi is not equal then in this case this is this pose some problem because this may represent that x is a substitute of y rather y is a complement of x so to respond to this asymmetry the economists will develop another way to to compromise to solve this problem okay so here comes the concept of net substitute and complement. So net substitute or complement is that okay if they are net substitute, that means partial x i, partial p j. Given you are constant, is positive, and net complement is partial x i, partial p j. Given u is constant, is negative. Now this solve the problem of asymmetry, asymmetry problem. So here the net substitute and complement. Just take a look at the substitution effect. Okay, then you can see how they are symmetry. Okay, so we know that the compensated demand curve of I is equal to partial E, partial P I. So partial x i partial p j given u is constant is equal to partial x i compensated demand curve partial p j and this is equal to partial partial e partial p i derived by partial p j so this is equal to partial square e partial p i and partial p j then by the Young theorem, this is equal to partial, partial e, partial j divided by partial i. Okay, so what is the upper right hand side? Partial e, partial p j is equal to partial x j, the compensated demand curve, partial i. Okay, then this is equal to partial x j, partial p i, given u is constant. Then you can see that partial xi partial pj given u is constant is equal to partial xj partial pi given u is constant. So this solved the asymmetry problem. Okay, this proves their symmetry. So in two goods case, two goods must be net substitutes. So if you want to get a net complement, you need to have three goods or above. Okay. Well, actually, in the real world is there are more substitutes or complements. So John Hicks, the one that developed the Hicksian demand curve, give a explanation that in the real world, the substitute is more than the complement. So he said that most good are substitutes. Okay. So John Hicks said that most goods are substitutes. <laughs> okay, so how he proved it? So he used the compensated demand function. It's a function of PI up to PN and indirect utility. <laughs> then he do the total derivatives and you will get PI partial X z partial p1 plus p2 partial xz partial p2 plus up to pn partial xc partial pn okay equal to zero so this is derived from the homogeneity property then
you derive it, you try Ci and divided by Si, and you will get the elasticity representation. No, you, you just divide Si in the in the equation, and you get E x one Ci plus E x two E c two plus up to E x n E c n, and you set it equal to zero. Okay, then we know that E X I P I is negative. The own price elasticity is negative because when price increase, the quantity will be lower by the negative relation in the Hexian law of demand. Okay, so given this is negative, the remaining one, or the J not equal to I of the E X I J. Okay. The sum of them should be positive. Okay, so this proves that most of the goods are substitute. Okay, because given the diamond sloping demand curve in Hexian demand, so most goods are substitute. So this is how John Hicks de de developed this concept. And some people say this is the second Hexian law of demand. Okay. Finally, we'll talk about how to model the composite commodities. Then we will go to the production functions. So sometimes you want to explain the behavior of certain kind of goods, good say good X, okay? While you want to use the utility analysis and draw in the diagram. However, you find that okay, X may be a substitute of various good, maybe Y, Z, W, okay? So there's no reason for you to just draw the diagram of good X and Y. Then what should you do, okay? So first, you write down the budget constraint. Maybe X has some relation between X2, X3, up to Xn. Then, what you can do is to represent a new variables to be equal to Px times X2, P2 times X2 plus P3 times X3 plus up to Pn Xn. Okay, so you use a new variable to capture all the other goods. Then what you will get is the, the budget constraint equal to P1 X1 plus Y. Okay, then you can draw it into 2D diagram because it only consists of X and Y. So you can use the draw it in the budget line and in this in difference curves. Then to estimate the, your model, okay, to model the com composite commodities into two goods and you explore the behavior of the X1, okay. So this is how you develop the model in composite commodities.